Hola, welcome to That Park Place. It's a great day here. Vash, are you doing well? I am doing good, good. Got my morning Joe here, looking to get into these topics with the uh, audience here. Should be a lot of fun. Yeah, the morning is always better with a good cup of coffee and a daily news roundup covering entertainment, streaming, theme parks, and video games. So let's get to all of our contributors for all the news that should be fun. Number one. Hello, folks. It's your old pal WDW Pro here with the news that nobody wanted to hear. Well... That's a bit of an overstatement. Some of you fans of the Clone Wars and Rebels may love this, but anyone who watched Ahsoka has some great despair, I would suggest. Dave Filoni is chief creative officer at Lucasfilm. will be planning the future of Star Wars films and shows by Jordan Moreau. This out of Variety, although it has been covered on other websites and was broken on Vanity Fair. It's important to note that Dave Filoni is the one who announced this, not Disney. And Dave Filoni announced it in an article during Thanksgiving week, a time which is typically not useful for disseminating big news. All of this may lend credence to the idea that Disney isn't very excited about this. In fact, over on the WDW Pro channel, we have a video today covering the fact that, or, well, the alleged fact that John Favreau may have been offered this position and declined. But Dave Filoni is now the chief creative officer at Lucasfilm. That is a position that has been created specially for him and now places him above Kathleen Kennedy in terms of generating Star Wars content. Why anyone would want this job, I don't know, considering it has been basically a decade since the studio made money at the box office when you consider that it will likely be 2026 before they get the Ray movie out, and if it makes a profit, so be it, but it might not, and that means it will be more than a decade since the studio made money. Number two. Hello, this is John F. Trent, the editor-in-chief at thatparkplace.com. Today I've got a story about critics savaging the upcoming Disney animated film, Wish. Let's take a look at this here over at thatparkplace.com. Here's the headline. Critics savaged the Walt Disney Company's Wish, described as most aggressive piece of Disney propaganda in years. The film is not doing so well, according to critics. It has a 50% rotten score on the tomato meter. It has received an average score of 5.9 out of 10 from 80 reviews. There are 40 fresh reviews and 40 rotten reviews. Looking at the top critic score, the film has an atrocious 33% with an average rating of 5 out of 10. There are 7 fresh reviews and 14 rotten reviews. So let's take a look at what some of these critics are actually saying. Grace Randolph at Beyond the Trailer uh, gave the film a fresh rating, but she said this. Sure, it has lots of problems and feels half-baked, but that Disney magic is powerful stuff. Fans of Disney animation will find it fun, largely thanks to great performances by Chris Pine and Ariana DeBose. This is the Thanks I Get is a great song. Lindsay Barr at the Associated Press gave the film a rotten two out of four rating. She said, Wish is harmless holiday programming for the family, but it's strange to watch a movie about celebrating the individual star in everyone that feels like it was made by mandate, not a dream. Rachel Labonte at Screen Rant gave the movie a fresh three point out of, out of five, but she said, Disney Wish acts as both an homage to the company and a new original story, though the success of the latter isn't quite as strong as the former. Let's go down here to Brian Tellerico at RogerEbert.com. He gave the film a rotten two out of four, and he said Disney's Wish is the most aggressive piece of Disney propaganda in years. Ross Boname at Collider gives the film a rotten C minus. He said Disney Animation's 60 second film tries to remember the magic of the past the result is one of the worst animated Disney films in years. He says, Wishes visually appealing a celebration of Disney's 100th anniversary mostly lacks inventiveness and gravitas, but features some memorable music. So that is what some of the critics are saying. They are not happy with the film. Time will tell whether or not the audiences will react differently and whether or not it will indeed be another box office flop for the Walt Disney Company, which has seen flop after flop after flop in this year of our Lord 2023. Number three. Hi, everybody. Tommy Tables here. Now, you might have seen a couple of videos that I've been in on the Pro Channel talking about the toy industry, which is sort of one of my passions. I'm particularly enthused about toys for for uh, young kids, young boys, including Transformers, Star Wars, Marvel, superheroes, all that sort of jazz, which these days uh, seem to be more geared towards the adult collector than they are towards the kid. Especially when it comes to Star Wars toys, unfortunately, we've seen a significant decrease in their presence on the shelves of large retailers like Walmart, Target, and the defunct Toys R Us. 
Hasbro is aiming to change that. A lot of their figures before have been ending up in the bargain bin and at Ross or just being thrown out. World-class BSers are very, very good about documenting this. Hasbro, however, has announced that they are creating a new Star Wars toy line, which is the four-inch Epic Hero series. This series will be released in January 2024. The figures will range between $10 to $35, and they will be in the classic Star Wars size, the, the ones that are similar to the G.I. Joe's, like the way that they were sized when they were first released back in 1979. The other thing I want you to notice is this lineup for their first wave. You have Darth Vader, Ahsoka, Mando, Baby Yoda, Luke, Stormtrooper, Paz Vizsla, and then Sabine. With perhaps the exception of Ahsoka and Sabine, all of these figures are either visually appealing or good sellers that Hasbro knows. It's like they've looked at their entire Star Wars lineup and said, these are the only characters that either have enough popularity to sell or look cool enough that a kid would say, mommy, mommy, I want this. The other thing to note about these figures is that they are four points of articulation. So that means that the arms move up and down, the legs move up and down, the head turns, like very similar to what the actual original Star Wars toys were like. At any rate, this is Hasbro's attempt to regain their kids audience for Star Wars, which unfortunately they've lost. Do you think this will succeed? What are your thoughts? Would you actually want to buy this if you saw it in the retailer when you had to go to Walmart for something? If your kid was demanding it, do you think your kid would demand it? Let us know. Leave us a comment down below. Number four. Hello there, Vash Sky here with our next story, this time from the Disney Parks blog. Disney Cruise Line sets sail in Australia for the first time ever. This is really interesting. Disney Cruise Line will mark another incredible milestone when the Disney Wonder sets sail from the shores of Australia for the first time ever, embarking on the inaugural Disney Magic at Sea Cruise for families in Australia and New Zealand. I think this is interesting because we are seeing that one of the most compelling products from the Disney Parks Experiences and Parks Division for Disney is their cruise line. And we know that they're adding another Triton class ship after the treasure. We also know that they they just made that incredible acquisition of a cruise liner and they're reimagining that for sales. Looks like in the Asian or Pacific area. So this is a really, really interesting uh, development here in that they're not only expanding the amount of vessels that they have, but they're also expanding in their destinations. Uh, we'll have to see how this actually works out. Are you guys interested in taking a Disney cruise to Australia? Sounds pretty cool to me. Let us know in the comments below. All right, it is the end of another day here on That Park Place. Thank you so much for sticking with us to the end. Uh, of course, if you wanna interact with us live, you can do that on the uh, Twitter handles above or even on our live show, which is Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Eastern time because Eastern time apparently rules the world or something. I don't know. All right. Well, uh, if you like what we're doing here, consider hitting the like button or share this out on social media on your favorite platform. And if you personally like what we're doing here, uh, consider subscribing to That Park Place for all the news that should be fun. Thanks for watching That Park Place News. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media account.